G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to Isle 2 Stromovic, the Battle of Stalingrad and once again we're taking a look at Mausame. Now the video for today's battle is going to be a few clips from my experiments with Mausame in Isle 2 over the last couple of days. And what I'm going to be doing is taking an advanced look at how the Mausame operates in Isle 2 and how it can be used and utilised. Now first things first, Mausame in Isle 2 is still an experimental and since I looked at it last time nothing has advanced, there has been no new features, no updates added to the mouse aim. It is still being worked on, but IL-2 is primarily a simulator, so joystick control takes priority, mouse is a secondary development that the developers are working on. Now, in my last video on this, a few people posted in the comments saying that you could bind certain controls to the keyboard. Uh, this was actually a bit of misinformation among the commenters. It actually can't be done. I've confirmed this with the developers and I've looked deeply into it myself. I was actually looking at trying to bind many of the mouse aim controls or I should say rebind many of the mouse aim controls, as I found them to be a little unintuitive in comparison to what I'm used to. For example, free look in IL-2 is right mouse button to look around. Now what I wanted to do is rebind that to the C key and free up my right mouse button for track enemy target after I've padlocked a target or targeted an enemy aircraft, which is the control configuration that I use in War Thunder. Um, it can't be done. The right mouse button as it's being used by experimental mouse aim mode is unavailable to rebind to any other controls outside of the free look button. It cannot be rebound. Now I double checked this both with the in-game configuration and by trying to get into the configuration files outside of the game themselves to see if it could be redone there. Um, it can't be. At the moment it is locked in and this is likely due to the fact that it is an experimental development and not something that is ready for full-time usage yet. Now to explain the primary difference between mouse aim in War Thunder and mouse aim in IL-2, at least in its current state, I need to explain a little bit about how mouse aim actually works. Mouse aim in War Thunder is actually two control methods, not one. There's one that I like to call the soft control method and one that I like to control the hard control method. The soft control method in War Thunder is the mouse aim itself. You put the little cursor at a location and the aircraft will attempt to manipulate its own control surfaces to fly in the direction of that cursor at all times. Now that's a soft control method. The hard control method is the keyboard binds. These are effectively the pitch, roll and yaw controls from a joystick mapped to your keyboard. Now these, I call these the hard control method because if you activate any of these keys they will automatically override anything that the soft control method, the mouse aim, is doing. This is why you can hold your mouse cursor in any location you want in War Thunder and then you can manipulate the keyboard controls and the plane will fly in a completely different direction regardless of where the mouse cursor is. The hard controls override the soft controls at all times, any time they are activated. And this is the first thing you'll notice with IL-2 experimental mouse aim. There is no hard control method. Well there is. The hard control method is the mouse itself. You can still bind your joystick or keyboard axes to pitch, roll and yaw if you wish to. However, the game will completely ignore any of those inputs. It will only accept inputs from the mouse when mouse aim is active. Now I'm almost positive that in the future a hard and soft control method will be implemented into IL-2, but it currently doesn't exist. And this is why a lot of the maneuvers you'll see in this video are a little rough. Let's, let's put it that way. I don't have the hard controls to really fine control what the aircraft is doing. You're 100% reliant on playing with the mouse. Now if you've ever jumped into a War Thunder realistic battle and played exclusively with mouse, you'll see a lot of similarities to what you'll see in this. However, I have found ways of manipulating the mouse in order to get particular controls to work while limiting others. For example, if I want to do a gentle bank or actually cause the aircraft to roll over, I found that holding the mouse in one location on the mouse pad and then very careful twisting it on the axis of the laser itself would activate the rudder and the aileron controls just enough to perform a roll riding an aircraft if it got inverted or to go from an inverted maneuver back into level flight without actually activating all the controls to spin the aircraft out of control. And that actually can happen, because in IL-2 there is no instructor. There is nothing limiting the controls of your aircraft. Your aircraft has all of the control availability with mouse aim that it would under joystick controls. Now, in War Thunder an instructor exists to try and limit this, as there is a lot of things you can do that will actually put your aircraft in an incredibly bad way by flicking your mouse around too much. The instructor reins in your movements and limits them in order to try and keep the aircraft stable. It also utilizes a more simplistic flight model than sim mode, removing a lot of the aerodynamic and torque effects that an aircraft will suffer from. 
However, in IL-2, again, things get a little nasty because there is no simplistic flight model. You are using exactly the same full sim flight model that somebody on a joystick would be using. This means the experimental mode mouse aim is a lot more difficult to use. It's a, it's a little bit uncomfortable with how the controls are set up and you cannot rebind them to a better area. You are restricted to only using the mouse for flying, which requires you to relearn how the mouse operates a little bit in order to be able to get your guns on target and be able to fly the aircraft with stability. A lot of restraint is required in the control movements, and you need to keep in mind at all times that every aerodynamic effect that the aircraft would suffer from when you're flying on joystick is completely in existence within the mouse aim mode. So as I said last time, it still needs a lot of work, however, I've had a lot of fun playing around with this. Now, this was the first full sessions that I've played in full multiplayer. Not using single player to experiment around, but getting full on into the multiplayer of mouse aim. And it has been a lot of fun. Occasionally some funny stuff happens. That was, um, I am still really sorry that I did that. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't my intention to shoot your plane and turn your plane into the projectile I used to kill the enemy, but hey, it worked, we got him. So anyway, so far I've been talking about the negatives and the restrictions of the controls, but what about the plus signs? Well, even though you're restricted to just mouse control at this point, the planes feel even better than under, under mouse aim than they have in War Thunder Realistic. You're actually in full control of everything that happens to your aircraft, which means you can put the plane in some places that in War Thunder's mouse aim, the instructor itself would limit you and prevent you from being able to do. Now, for an amateur pilot or somebody who's just new, the instructor is a very, very, very valuable tool. It'll allow you to keep your aircraft in the air in situations where you probably shouldn't. But for anybody who's played a lot of War Thunder Mouse Aim will quite clearly tell you that they wish there was a way to completely turn off the instructor and fly under a simulation airframe without instructor but using the mouse controls as it opens up a whole bunch of maneuvering options that you can bring into play. That was a really interesting kill by the way. I didn't actually take that guy down with my guns. I hit him with my tail as I pulled up and drove his aircraft flat face first into the runway. But anyways, what gets more interesting is the effect that the mouse hamer has inside this environment when you take away some of those niceties, things like instructors, things like simplified flight models. Doing some experimenting from the other side, and I'm going to put some video up on this hopefully within the next couple of weeks, but I've taken out an aircraft in the marked, same the, the test server that we're currently on, which uses markers and replicates basically War Thunder realistic battles using mouse aim but you can set your controls to joystick and fly joystick controls in the same match against the mouse aimers. And what I actually found is that, unlike in War Thunder, joystick users aren't as at, at as much of a disadvantage as they are in War Thunder Realistic. In War Thunder Realistic, mouse aim is king. There is no way to get around that. The pilots using mouse aim are more accurate. They're able to turn just as hard as you if they're using their keyboard controls easy, uh, keyboard controls correctly there's there's very few advantages except in some defensive maneuvers that the joystick will give you over a mouse aimer and they're completely overshadowed by the mouse aimer's ability to aim but with the realistic flight models and the lack of instructor the aircraft doesn't always overcorrect its guns you still have to move the mouse in such a way to take aim you are not pinpoint accurate with your shots the guy that I just rammed into the runway using my tail if I'd been in War Thunder Realistic, I would have been able to snipe out his pilot from over a kilometre away from that angle using this aircraft. In IL-2, I was right up his rear, and I just could not get those guns on target, because the plane was rocking around the mouse aim. It doesn't instantly respond to what you're trying to do. Now, while the mouse aim itself does make it much easier for a pilot or a new pilot to get into IL-2 and enjoy the flight sim itself, this having to counter the real effects of the aircraft and not having an instructor holding your hand at all times means that it doesn't give them a definitive advantage. It is easier to fly under the mouse aim, but a skilled joystick user will outmaneuver and quite easily take out mouse aiming pilots. 
it's actually taken me quite some time and quite a lot of practice to get the guns to do what I want them to do within the game and to get the to work at a few techniques on the mouse to actually get the plane to respond in a manner that I want the plane to respond. It wasn't as intuitive as just pointing the mouse at the target and pulling the trigger. Flying the aircraft when it has exceptional levels of damage is also incredibly difficult under the mouse aim because there are certain things you can do on a joystick to trim out certain amounts of damage that the mouse just doesn't give you the option of doing. You can't fly with a constant left aileron roll in a situation where you've taken severe damage to the right wing to try and counter out that loss of lift and to stabilize the aircraft. The mouse will just lean off to the right. Unless you're constantly pulling the mouse to the left, inducing a solid turn, the plane will eventually tip over and fall into the ground or go into a damage-induced flat spin. Likewise, it comes down to aircraft controls as well. Now, at the moment, I'm using automated controls. And this is pretty standard, and it's pretty much exactly the same way that War Thunder's mouse aim in realistic battles does it, where the plane handles most of its engine calibration completely on its own. You don't have to touch it if you don't want to. However, also like War Thunder, you can activate manual engine controls if you wish to by turning the automated systems off. Coupled with the realistic flight models, you can use the manual engine controls to keep an aircraft that has taken significant amounts of damage and should be just out of the game and keep it in the air for an extended period of time, long enough to be able to get the aircraft back to the runway, or to increase its performance in a flight. However, the effect is far more noticeable. In War Thunder, just manipulating the radiator flaps is really all that most people use um, manual engine controls for. In this, I found playing around with all of the systems, radiator controls, oil controls, fuel mixture controls, would allow me to do certain things with the aircraft that would just be an impossibility otherwise. I think if they put in a hard and soft control method on this mouse aim, this would be a perfect example of how to maintain most simulation aspects while still opening the game up to a maybe not flight sim dedicated audience. But I suppose the core of this entire video has been my playing around with it and realising that even though mouse aim as a general rule is disliked by simulation communities, because it is an easier way to fly, Unlike War Thunder, the advantages of mouse aim don't seem to be so extreme that a joystick user can't come in and conceivably do exceptionally well within a combat environment. In fact, in many ways, joystick users still have the advantage because of the nature of the flight model itself and the lack of hand-holding provided by an instructor. Now, of course, there's going to probably be some people in the comment section going, oh, but it'll ruin the game, and uh, I got them in the last video, and I'm going to point this out again. The servers that use the mouse aim are servers that are clearly marked as using mouse aim. Servers that don't wish to have the mouse aim available to pilots and want people only in simulation setups with joysticks and so on are locked. Mouse aim will not work on those servers. And that's the one of the advantages of the way that IL-2 is doing it. You can have a mouse aim server, you can have a mixed server, or you can have an exclusive server, and then you can have all of the options available. So you can have an exclusive sim flight model uh, joystick only server with markers if you want. The servers ran independent of the developer itself. So you can have whatever combination you want and you will only encounter mouse aimers if you don't wish to by going to a server that allows mouse aimers. Conversely, if you're a new pilot and you don't want to fight advanced joystick users that have been playing the game for an exceptional period of time, you can join an exclusive mouse aim server and you will not encounter joystick users. Overall, the more I play with the mouse aim, the more I find I like it and like the way that IL-2 seems to be doing their take on mouse aim. And while I won't be spending excessive periods of time on the mouse aim at this point, while it's still in experimental mode, I can quite clearly see that once it's finished and a hard and soft control method are actually implemented into the controls itself, and the game's mouse aim comes out of experimental, I can see myself enjoying this sort of advanced mouse aim take as a very nice, very fun, casual way of going out for a fly without pulling all my joysticks and equipment out. I can see myself spending quite a lot of time on IL-2's mouse aim servers for relaxed fun. Anyways, ladies and gents, I will be coming back and taking an advanced look at IL-2's tanks in the future as well and just seeing exactly how they're progressing and do a little bit more in-depth in analysis to what I have done in the past on them. Until then, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, click like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more, Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.